What's the difference between cross price elasticity and elasticity of demand in economics? Cross price elasticity is actually going to measure how much the demand curve moves in or out in response to some other product having a change in the price. That's going to be the difference, where this one's shape of the demand curve, this one cross price elasticity is how, how much that demand curve moves in or out. And of course, all elasticities in economics are going to be a measure of percent change in the dependent variable over percent change in the independent variable, where these two things have a causal relationship like this. That is, the independent variable causes the dependent variable to change, and elasticity is measuring, for one, the direction, whether it's positive, whether, whether the slope of whatever it is on a graph is positive, or whether it's negative, whether they go in opposite directions. And then the magnitude of that change, the magnitude of the elasticity, is measuring how responsive is the dependent variable to the independent variable. So elasticity of demand, of course, is percent change in quantity that people purchase. That's the dependent. And people change the quantity they, they purchase depending on the price. So the price causes the quantity. And percent change in price, of course, goes in the denominator. So the key thing with elasticity of demand is that it measures the shape of a demand curve. Whereas cross price elasticity is actually going to measure how much the demand curve moves in or out in response to some other product having a change in the price. That's going to be the difference. So let's think about cross price elasticity between product B and product A. Where product A is the supply demand curve model that you're really focused on, you're really interested in how many tennis shoes do people buy when the price of tennis shoes goes up and down, this is your main focus. But that might depend on the price of other products, like sneakers. Sneakers aren't exactly the same as tennis shoes, but they're kind of substitutes for each other. So if the price of sneakers goes up by 20%, the question is, will people switch from the sneakers market to the tennis shoes market, in which case if they stop buying the, the sneakers and start buying the tennis shoes, the demand curve for this will shift out. And how much it shifts out is going to depend on how close of substitutes are these. Like are tennis shoes and sneakers basically the same thing? Um, for some people they are, for some people they aren't. But I'm going to say, yeah, they're actually pretty similar if the price of sneakers goes up 20%, uh, then maybe the demand for tennis shoes will go up by 10%, which is a reasonably high magnitude, I would say, of that elasticity. So the, the numerator here is demand for product A. It's how much this curve shifts out, what percent does this shift out. The denominator in cross price elasticity is what percent does the price of that uh, other product go up. And you notice I haven't put supply and demand curves on this graph of product B, which in our example is sneakers. And the reason for that is it doesn't actually matter for most of these analyses what the cause of this uh, price increase is. Whether this price increase is driven by demand or supply isn't going to matter for the cross price elasticity. This price goes up and the cross price elasticity is really just how much does this demand curve respond. Now, of course, cross price elasticity is used when we want to know how close a substitute are these two things, or are they complements? Where, I mean, classic example of complements are like peanut butter and jelly. If the price of peanut butter goes up by 50%, because there's, say, a, a, a disease among peanuts or whatnot, then people might actually consume less jelly because they don't have that wonderful peanut butter to pair it with. So in which case, increase in the price of peanut butter leads to a decrease in the demand for jelly. That means they're complements. And you can have either a positive or negative cross price elasticity. If there's a positive cross price elasticity, these are substitutes. If there's a negative cross price elasticity, they are complements. 
Now, elasticity of demand is going to capture how steep this curve is, where if you have a really inelastic demand, it doesn't matter what the price is when the price goes up 100%. People buy maybe a little fewer, but not that much fewer. That's going to be a really steep demand curve. will capture an unresponsive uh, quantity to the price. Whereas if people are really responsive to price, like you increase the price a little bit, like 10%, and people buy like 50% fewer of the product, that's really responsive, that'll be a flat demand curve is going to capture that. And so elasticity of demand is the shape of the curve. Cross price elasticity of the demand has to do with how responsive that the whole demand curve is to another product that's either substitute or complement or perhaps neither.